Hey. Hey. I'm calling to tell you that there is for sure one embryo. Thank you, guys. I don't know about the other two, but one was ready for testing today. Oh. Yeah. We got a little muchacha. A little what? A little muchacha. <laughs> and we don't know if it's Huey, Dewey, or Louie, but we got one. Yeah, so I don't know if there are more coming, but... <sighs> just find out? I literally just found out. I told... I'm this. packing my suitcases today. I had a feeling. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling something's going on. You got a call? No, I got, um... I got an email. Oh, wow. I asked because I was like, I'm not hearing. I was just about to message you that we have one embryo that was for PGT today, day five. Yeah, it beat PGT as the testing. They will check uh-huh. again tomorrow and then on Saturday, and you'll get a final update then. Do you want me to give you an update tomorrow as well? So I said, yeah, as soon as possible. All Every of time. All the time. Every time. <laughs> yeah, all that. Wow. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <sighs> So. Yeah. And you got your news in San Francisco. Yeah. I'm going to go collect myself. Oh, are you still there? At the- oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're in a, I'm in the Jakku um, conference room right now. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Hey, I'm at Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco right now. Oh, fun. <laughs> and I'm calling to tell you that officially we have one embryo so far. Oh, uh, meaning, does that mean that there, there's, uh, something it's, happened to the other two? I think the other two can still develop. Oh, okay. But yeah. we have one confirmed one. Yeah. And I'm crying and I'm happy. Awesome. Yeah. Um, when do they send it off for testing? I don't know if they send it off immediately or if they wait to see what happens with the other two. But okay. Yeah, I'm happy. Well, great. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, I was, we, I was getting kind of afraid. I was kind of afraid that there might be none. So like, I'm, I'm stoked. And we want to thank all of you for watching and hanging out with us today. We really appreciate it. We really enjoyed you guys. Thanks for hanging out in the chat. And we hope to hear from you soon. And thank you, eBay. And thank you, Star Wars. Thank you guys so much. I have been dying to tell you this the whole time. What? I have an embryo. <gasps> I've been like crying, like walking around crying. Oh my god! In college, my gay best friend and I joked that if we hadn't found love by 40, we'd have a baby with each other. 20 years later, I'm pulling the ripcord. From deciding on solo motherhood to choosing IVF, I'm Meredith, and this is The Backup Plan. Okay, well that was a fun little montage to edit. (laughs) I have had so many ups and downs throughout this. Like when people say that... IVF is a roller coaster. It's really no joke. I have never felt so many highs and so many lows in such a short period of time. And I feel like I'm getting sad and excited about the same things at different times. It's very strange. I mean, I went from being super excited about nine eggs, super sad about three eggs. I should have been more excited about three fertilized eggs, but it didn't register because of the sad news I had just gotten. So anyway, I was wondering, should I wait until the end of the video for you to find out that there indeed is at least a blastocyst from this process? Or should I just lead with it? And I just decided to lead with it. So I'll wait until the end to give you the results of everything that came through. But I did find out that one blastocyst made it on day five, which is what we like to see. I think the best thing I did for myself during this time period was to have a stacked calendar. So I knew I was likely to get this information on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. I didn't know exactly when. I knew I was going to have a check-in with my doctor the following Monday, but like the information could have come at any time. Luckily, I already had stuff coming along on those days. I knew I was going up to San Francisco with Christina for this Star Wars event that she was doing 
And I was very excited because I've never been to Lucasfilm headquarters, even though I've worked for them and I worked on the productions. I'd never been up to San Francisco to like see the Yoda fountain in person. And (laughs) that was very exciting. I didn't have control over when that was corresponding to news I was getting, but I did think to myself, I may be there while I get this information. Not only did I have that ready to go, but as soon as we landed, I had a lunch and normally I probably would have rescheduled that, but it was really good to just have for my brain, at least to have one thing to go from here to there. And and it was just like (laughs) the best way to do all this. So I encourage you, if you are going through the fertility process, like really know who you are and what you like and how you process things and just try to align your schedule with that. It's, I was really glad that I had stuff to roll into. I am extremely grateful for the relationship and the communication that I'm able to have with my doctor throughout this process. While the Kind Body app is very wonky, at least I know sometimes when I'm on it, my doctors and nurses are on at the same time. So they'll, I'll send a message and I'll get a message right back. It doesn't necessarily always pop up accordingly. However, there isn't really that much of a lack of time between when I'm sending messages back, you know, allowing for Saturdays and Sundays. But as you saw in the previous video, even if it's really important information, my doctor has been great enough to contact me on those off days. Okay. So let's talk about the first bit of news and how I got it. Uh, As I said, up in San Francisco. So the reason I was in San Francisco is because Christina, who is my friend, who is also my client because I'm managing her career now. She had a live streaming gig where she was up at San Francisco and did a like two and a half hour recording of eBay live auctions. I mean, it was very, it ended up being a very cool little setup. It went really, really well, but I noticed I got an email from kind body, like, I don't know, 15, 30 minutes into her streaming session. Now, as we've gone over in the past, she was the one to take me to my egg retrieval And I have just felt this like lizard brain attachment to her during this period. It's like, all I want to do is just like talk to her and my mom and that's it. Like nobody else. So I was just really grateful to be with her there at this, you know, sort of emotionally tumultuous time. So to look down and get a message from kind body while my like buoy is on screen and I can't talk to her for a while was very unsettling. So Uh, I check my kind body message and I'm sitting next to her makeup artist who's so sweet. And I, you know, I barely know her and she was the first one to find out this information. For those of you who don't know, because I didn't, um, (laughs) what they do is when they retrieve the eggs, they do an insemination immediately. One of the questions I had for her was whether or not it was a conventional insemination or an ICSI, I-C- SI, which I can't remember what that stands for right now. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'll I'll put it here at the bottom of the screen. So I sent a message to my doctor on like the 29th and said, Hey, what kind of insemination do I have? And I learned it was ICSI. And if you check out videos of this on YouTube, like it's so wild, they take one sperm and they just put it right, right in the egg. And it's supposed to be a more precise way of doing it, but just like in my theater major brain, like it doesn't, it feels like you're supposed to have these millions of sperm and just one special one makes it through. So to choose one and be like, you're going in it. I mean, I guess it's great. It it ended up great for me. So I'm (laughs) no complaints, but it's just, it's absolutely wild. So she wrote back to me and she did say that it was ICSI. And then as I'm up there, Christine is on screen. I get on my phone and I sent this message. Thank you for this info, checking in to see when I'm going to get the next update. Thank you. And she responded back pretty quickly. That was what I was surprised by. Love that you sent this. I was just about to message you that we have one embryo that was for PGT today, day five. Yay. They will check again tomorrow and then on Saturday and you will get the final update then. Do you want me to give an update tomorrow as well? To which I replied, yeah, updates as often as possible. Could the other two come through? She said, okay, you got it. One might, but the other one is further behind. So I kind of doubt it. We will see. I told her I'm up in San Francisco at Lucasfilm headquarters, and it's such a weird place to learn this information. So then she wrote back and said, if you would rather wait to know the info, we can do that too, whatever you prefer. 
And I said, no, it's been great to learn in real time. I came up here knowing that it would be a great place to learn good news or a good distraction if necessary. So then the next day I got this message from her. Hello again, hope you had or have safe travels today. The day six update is that one of the embryos progressed, but it is not yet ready for the biopsy for PGT testing. Maybe, hopefully tomorrow. The other embryo, the one that I mentioned was behind, did not progress and is unlikely to make it. You will get the final update tomorrow directly from the embryology team. I think we are scheduled to talk Wednesday, but if you want to schedule that for earlier, let me know. Have a nice weekend, Dr. S. Okay, Wednesday was when we were going to talk. I thought it was Monday. There are a lot of days in a week. Seven. <laughs> so, so I wrote back and I said, great news. I understand that the third's progress is unlikely, but I like to defy odds. So let's just hope it takes after me, regardless, thrilled otherwise. So I got that information at an Irish pub, which if you know me well, the fact that I learned embryo progress in an Irish pub and also at Lucasfilm headquarters, it's just so wildly on brand for me. And every, everything feels right is what I'm saying. <laughs> and then finally on May the 4th, may the 4th be with you. She wrote back and said, the other one made it. Woo, have a great weekend. I got excited and I said all three, and then I checked and I had this message from the embryologist. I will say that this is clearly a form message uh, and not all of it makes sense. The information is all there. It's just grammatically, it doesn't really make sense. Hello, below is the final summary for your recent cycle. We retrieved nine number of oocytes. Oocytes? Oocytes. Oocytes. We retrieved nine number of oocytes, nine oocytes. They should have cut the word number out. It's fine, it's fine. Of those, three were mature, three were exposed to sperm, three oocytes, oocytes, showed evidence of normal fertilization. The total number of embryos biopsied for PGT was two. The total number of embryos vitrified for future use was two. We hope this information provides you with a detailed summary of your recent IVF cycle. You should have an appointment scheduled with your physician or provider team in seven to 10 days. We wish you nothing but success for you. We wish, we wish you nothing but success for you. Again, the grammar. They, they want me to have a nice journey. I want to have a nice journey too. So Huey, Dewey, and Louise have now graduated to Chippendale. Um, I am happy. I'm happy. Do I want a few more? Yes, because of attrition rates and stuff. But I feel a lot more confident about this stage of the game. I don't know why, I just do. I mean, every time I've gone in to get checked out, I've been told that my uterine lining is gorgeous. So it is just a very happy little home ready for a little tiny blastocyst. For those of you that don't know the like, embryo development process, because I didn't. After the fertilization, conventional or ICSI, they wait to see how the cells develop. So every day they split into, it starts with two cells and then four and then eight, and then it kind of just becomes a clump of cells. You want to get to the fifth day. The fifth day is the best day for embryos. That is when the cells have kind of divided into two separate little spots. Again, I am a theater major, so like probably look this up from a scientist or a doctor. But part of the cells are forming what will be the placenta and the other part of the cells are forming what will be the baby. Day five is the best day for this, although it can develop up until the seventh day. So I have a day five and I have a day seven. The day five is the better one. The day seven it's not that it's bad, it's just that the chances are a little bit less that it will be okie dokie smoky. Now, my two little blastocysts have had a, a couple of cells pulled from them. They've been sent off to another lab. So it is supposed to be like two to three weeks until I find out exactly how okie dokie smoky my two <laughs> blastocysts are. So since I've gotten all this information, I had a little chat with my doctor and man, did I have a list of like some important smart questions and then other questions that were just like, I don't know, I just want to know. She gave me the visual grade of the two embryos as well. So they get graded just like eggs in a grocery store. <laughs> and obviously the best one that you want is like a double A grade. My day five has a BB grade. And my day seven has a BA grade. So technically 
BA is better, but because it's the day seven, it's not as choice as the day five is. So the day five is the one that we would implant if the genetic tests come back and both of the little guys are green. So the day five is the one that we would implant if Chip and Dale both come back A-OK. There's also a number associated with eggs, and I don't fully understand that, even though I've read through documentation a number of times. Again, I am a theater major. I'm just going to say that right now, I feel very good. I just feel as though things are going to be fine. I've got my thick uterine lining. They've made it this far. I am happy. Okay, so let's talk about the questions that I had for my doctor, because I don't know, maybe you have questions like this too. I wanted to know if when they pulled the eggs out, if they knew, like, (laughs) if they kept track of, like, which follicle they came from. I don't know, I just, I, because, because the whole way my ultrasound tech has been like, oh man, the party's happening on the left side. Like, your left ovary is kicking it. And... (laughs) I was just like, I just want to know if they all came from the left ovary. Although I just like feel like they did. The answer is no. She said once they suck it all out, it's just it's just in a pool of of eggs and goo. And <laughs> again, technical terms. I am a theater major. Uh, so there's no way of knowing. There's just the feeling I have within my heart. She told me that if an egg is over 50, millimeters, there's an 80% chance they're going to get a mature egg. I'm going to go back and look at my charts and see how many I had over 15. This is why we take pictures of everything. Okay. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I had seven that were over 15. And then one, two, three that were hovering around. They were like 13. Teen, almost 14. So that's why we expected more mature eggs. So it's, uh, that was why just the three mature eggs were surprising. I asked her if we had to do egg retrieval again, which, you know, just last week, I think it was, you heard me saying that I was really grateful. I don't ever have to do egg retrieval again. But then I had this like come to Jesus moment where I was like, "Mm, I mean, if I had to do it again, it was like, two weeks. It wasn't forever. And it felt quicker than two weeks. And now that I know how to do it, and now that I know the outcome, it's really not that bad, right? I didn't have wild side effects. And it's kind of like having to drive to a location the first time with kind of complicated map quest printed directions versus, oh, I've been here before. I know where I'm going. You turn at that driveway instead of that mailbox. What you know what I mean? So, I feel better about having to do this. Not financially, but if I had to do it again, I don't feel terrible about it. Um I did ask her what kind of changes they would make if we had to go through this process again, and she said, "Well, I would want to have a a more thorough look at your chart and really look at all the different steps that we took, but just off the cuff, I think we would start you at a higher dosage of medication at the beginning." And then maybe taper it off a little bit at the end. So that gives your follicles a little bit more time to do what they got to do. So if I have to do it again, I have to do it again. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I, like I said, I feel good about where I'm at right now. I did ask her about vitamin D3 because I have seen some videos online that say you should boost up your vitamin D while you're going through this process. And she said, well, let's take a look at the prenatals that you're on right now. So I pulled up what was included in them. For reference, I'm taking Rituals prenatal vitamins, which are expensive, but I'm taking them. (laughs) And they have quite a bit of vitamin D3 in them, so I'm not concerned. She asked if I have a vitamin D deficiency, which typically I do. That's the only thing that doctors are ever like "Eh," a little bit concerned about. Um, I was not on the regular vitamin D regimen at that time. She mentioned that we could run my blood again, see what it looks like. And I just kind of feel like not terribly necessary. In terms of next steps, I asked her, where do we go from here? Let's assume these two little dudes or dudettes are ready to go and feeling great. I'm going to stay positive that they are that way. What are we going to do now? She said, well, what we want to do is we want to start the cycle of progesterone, which is the, that's the big shot. 
It is a shot of oil into your muscle, and I know it is more difficult, so I've already started watching videos on how to prep for that. She said that that starts when your period starts. Now, I have just ended mine. She said that I could go on birth control, and then as soon as we know the information about these embryos, we can stop the birth control, start the progesterone. It's like a a more streamlined effect. Or we could wait until my next period starts. She said, that's up to you. And I hate making decisions. And so I was like, what's better? She goes, doesn't matter, whatever you prefer. I asked her what the time differential was if we were to start the birth control right now to lock me into whatever part of the menstrual cycle we need to so that we can release the floodgates when we need to. And she said that the differential between going the birth control route or the natural route is like a week, a week and a half or something. And for me, that's just, it doesn't matter. A week is not a huge deal. If it was like, oh, this is going to buy you a month of time. Okay, sure. But just waiting a week or two, I have already pumped myself full of so many hormones that I would rather give my body a little bit of a break and start when my natural cycle comes into play. So that's looking like, let's check the calendar. Ooh, I haven't put in my period for this. Let's do that too. (laughs) So I started, was a little bit longer this week. My period wasn't crazy. It wasn't like, um, I think I had a little bit more flow. I used pads this month instead of my menstrual cup. Menstrual cup, if you're not using it, I don't know what to tell you. It's the future, guys. Let's see, I'm recording this on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to me, but only in Alabama. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so it lasted a little bit longer than usual. Um, It really didn't feel too different for me. But then again, I'm a very lucky lady, and my period has always been pretty chill. Shout out to my sisters out there with difficult periods. Oh, God, but like using a pad this month. I told a friend of mine, I was like, I feel like a colonial mistress. The cup is great. You don't have to worry about anything. I just empty in the shower in the morning and at night and we good to go. I don't have to worry about anything else throughout the day. Smell, feeling dirty. Like if you don't use a menstrual cup, just give it a go. I know it's a little bit gross maybe, but you get over that so fast. And I just feel like I know my body better. Anyway, what were we looking at when my next period is? Right. Okay. So iPhone tells me it could be around... Yep, the math is mathing, and it looks like I'm going to start my period right during my friend's wedding, which is a destination wedding, and that is why I said no to it, because I cannot imagine having to travel with all of this fertility gear. I don't know if I start the shots right then or if I have to start the pills right then, but traveling during this time just did not feel like the right move. So it looks like May 26th, 27th is when that starts. So those are the next steps. I have a follow-up appointment on May 23rd, although I think I'm going to get the news um, this week. So that's where we're at. I'm excited. I feel good. I wonder what going through this process would be like if I wasn't telling anybody. (laughs) Um, I am just telling everybody um, that it comes up around because, I mean, I'm telling it online, so I might as well just share it everywhere. Like, I can't imagine not not telling people while you're going through this. Not in a way that like I'm belittling people's choice of of not telling. I just think that for like my emotions are like for me, this is everything I'm doing. Like this is my whole world. When people are like, what's new? I'm like, well, and I go into, you know, where I'm at in this process. Like nothing else kind of matters to me right now. So I can't imagine keeping that a total secret. So I admire people who are able to compartmentalize their lives that much and not share out this information. Like kudos to you. I'm not saying one way is right or one way is wrong. I'm just saying like life's crazy. Yeah. And I'm just, I know that at any step I could be back shoots and ladders to square one. And that is horrifying, but this is a thing I can compartmentalize. I can put away the scary stuff and just be excited about the exciting stuff. If this goes through, right? Like if this works, I 
want to be able to look back at this time and feel good about it and feel excited about it and be like, you know, I know I'm going to want to go back to past me and say, you didn't have to worry that whole time. You could have just been excited. Although on the flip side, I don't want to look back and be like, why did you prepare as much as you did? You know, I bought onesies when I was up at Lucasfilm, little newborn onesies. And I don't know, I just, everything could end in a second, right? Like I could, something horrible could happen and everything could be done tomorrow. So I guess we should just be excited about the things that we can be excited about while we can be excited about them. There will be a tiny baby in my life at some point, even if I end up adopting or something and I don't have an itty bitty baby. I know other itty bitty babies I can give little onesies to, so it's fine. It's just, it's a really wild time and I miss stability, but I never feel stable. <laughs> you know, I'm never content. I'm always looking for the next thing. So uh, such is life. Anyway. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. Keep thinking positive thoughts for me, and I will catch you on the flip side. The Backup Plan is created, produced, and hosted by me, Meredith Kate. Julian Hagens is my co-producer. You can find us on social media at Backup Plan Pod. The best place to get updates is to sign up for our newsletter at BackupPlanPod.com, where we also post all episodes, show notes, and transcripts. Thank you for listening. <laughs>